Alright. We like to have a lot of fun around here, but sometimes we have some trouble writing our sketches. Roll the clip. Cynthia. Josh, we're out of ideas. This is all trash. We've been sitting around here. Writing for 30 minutes is all, is all trash, Josh. We can't be out of sketch ideas. We've only had one on episode. On episode two. two. How? Why can't we think of anything? Put, uh, what's that? We do have one piece of fan mail. Well, don't just sit uh, there on your butt. Open it up. From James. Hmm. Hi. Love the work you've done on Hughes Heard. Wow. Oh, it's great to we be a fan. a fan. Maybe for the next episode, Hugh can roll you into a large cigarette and beat you. I think you're gonna like it. That's James. That's Talk soon. That's a. That's not a sketch it's, idea. It's an idea, but huh? Let's be here. I I don't know if I want to be beaten as a human cigarette. I'm a little bit skeptical. Yeah, you're right, that won't work. All right, Josh, I've actually kind of been working on a sketch idea myself, and I haven't told you about it. I've just been really working out all the kinks, but I think it's pretty solid now, and I'm ready to pitch it. Tell me. So what if I'm just like a really popular man around town, right? And I'm just kind of walking down the street, and I'm like, hey, oh, hey, hey, I was the wife, hey. Ooh, is that soup? Maybe I'll try a little bit. Great to see you. Is that anything? I mean, it's a little bit delusional, but it's... Oh, hey. Hey, Josh. 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 Ben's right behind us. He's baking the cake in the house. You're just hungry. Josh. I'm Hugh Hurd, and welcome to the Hughes Hurd Show. Hey, uh, I'm Josh. Today we have a lot of fun Hughes guests. Heard. Don't we, Josh? Cameraman, run that thing. <laughs> you said it, buddy. Uh, today we have a. Uh, to Hughes Herd, a show for the herd. Today, we have, well, we're, we're incredibly lucky to have guests who are just way more famous and talented than the two of us combined. We have Rob Pooley and Luke Jarvis. Uh, hey, fellas. Um, here, uh, let me, uh, oh, panic. And then let me just guess. Rob? You're wrong. Rob Pooley? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Yeah. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, we'll I'll only make that mistake once uh, within within when, within this time, or I won't. You know, we, we we'll never know. Um, thank you for being here, fellas. Uh, so Rob Pooley and Luke Jarvis, of course, have a beautiful website, uh, www.tracegados.tv. Uh, you can find them on social media. Just get that out of the way. Get the plugs out of the way Love because it. our small pool. Might not have heard of you because me and Josh, a couple of North Carolinians, uh, haven't spent much time in uh, Arlington, or uh, Boston, and New York. Um, how did you fellas start working with ACMI? Rob, uh, Rob's the Arlington resident, and so Rob and I were already we had a production company and we were producing a lot of different content. And of course, one of the common struggles when you're starting out is 
sourcing equipment. Um, we had some stuff of our own that we use, but inevitably for a lot of things, uh, particularly our own personal projects, we ended up wanting to rent stuff that was a little better. And I don't even remember exactly how we figured out about ACMI specifically. I think what happened was we were filming a pilot for NBC Sports Boston. We wanted to pitch like a show, a talk show about the Celtics, all with comedians talking about the Celtics, which ultimately we did film and NBC Sports Boston said no. So that is what it is. <laughs> but we were looking for a studio space. And, you know, again, like we were prepared to rent something. And then we discovered that actually Rob lives in Arlington and they have this incredible studio uh, where we could film, you know, for a very nominal cost. So that started our relationship with ACMI. And from there, we discovered not only did they have that studio, but they have all types of equipment that was super valuable for us uh, for different projects and also like a community of people and staff members who are fellow creatives making stuff. So that was really cool. It was very random and kind of by happenstance, but uh, we're really grateful for it because it's hard to imagine doing some of the stuff we do now without uh, their help. And that's uh, the gear that you use now? Because, I mean, just a, a couple college students, like watch, watching y'all's videos, like, I mean, they, it, it looks just, it, it looks so superb, just very clean. And then, and then, yeah, uh, you know, we were, I was just watching the, the janitor uh, yeah. fighting the bully one earlier today. It's just such like clean, like uh, well, uh, you know, shot, cinematographic, you know, all those buzzwords. But then, you know, you'll just have like the, the montage of him like sitting on whoopee cushions. Maybe we can right. push that in here. And um, uh, it's just a, it's such a great combination. Uh, yeah, thank you. I think it throws some people off. There's definitely uh, some, some, we rely more heavily on slapstick than at least most other stuff that I see getting made right now. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if we're kind of out of fashion or something, but yeah, it's, it's uh, we, we like to have really high production values, but also have really goofy, dumb stuff in there sometimes. Yeah. It's like a great way to tr like kind of trick people and reel them in, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's um, all about the deceit. <laughs> I should plug and say on top of the generous plugs you already gave us, our short is appearing in the independent Boston Film Festival, IFF Boston, this coming week, this weekend, and then next week. You know, IFF Boston, it's the biggest film festival in Boston. It's one we were really excited to be in. It would have been like a year ago, you know, it was one of these ones that got uh, postponed because of COVID and all that, and now is only online, although one mm. benefit of being online is, for instance, Maybe someone from get a lot of people Carolina watching. could watch. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's cool. It's uh, we're, we're excited to be in it, and it's fun that it at least is getting some amount of of festival exposure, even though the timing of the release really couldn't have been worse. We originally put it out <laughs> like right at the beginning of 2020. You know, the first festivals. Oh, and it's been yeah, the first back. festivals were like March. I remember, you know, realizing when the first one got postponed, I remember I was telling Rob, like, the other ones are getting postponed, man. This is like a little blip, you know. We don't need to cancel they our flight. They wouldn't flights. postpone it again. Yeah, so, you know, obviously I was wrong. But um, it was a year of very bad predictions by everybody, I think. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> I, had, I actually nailed every prediction after that, but that first, <laughs> that first one was – we're committed old women. Yeah. We did we did just wrap something that's that we're very excited about that we did film during COVID, which is our first feature length film. Um, really? Yeah, we shot that entire wrote and produced it entirely during COVID. Um, to it, it's super fun, super exciting, something that will hopefully be out this fall. Um, so yeah, are you no, guys I, uh, are you guys in North Carolina? Uh, Josh is in North Carolina. I'm over in Boston right now. 
Uh, so we're really we're, we're stretched in four different directions right now. I only uh, asked because the a bunch of the festivals we submitted to, you know, I was trying to look for festivals that are like worth it and actually seem, you know, really cool and popular. And I was surprised how many of those are down in the South. I mean, really? we submitted to Nashville Film Festival. Um, Atlanta Film Festival. Yeah, we didn't submit to mm -hmm. that one. That was too early a deadline. I, I, it's so weird though. I, Atlanta recently, I guess, became kind of a big film city just because yeah. of like Tyler Perry and, and right. uh, whatnot. Uh, my mom always tries to get me to apply to be a, an extra in those movies. You know, just uh, as the if Tyler you want to. Tyler Perry movies? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a, you know, Hugh drives from Boston down to Atlanta to right. be in the background of a Tyler Perry movie. It makes perfect sense. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no. You could be the one in the background that's like, I love you, Medea. <laughs> <laughs> or I just like don't understand that I'm in a movie and I'm like, oh, I love you, Tyler Perry. And then I have to get escorted off set. Uh, I but, heard of a, yeah. a, not to take oh, us sorry. too far off track, but I just talked to a friend who works like in the industry and they have a, a very close friend of theirs that they got work as an extra on a television series. And the person filmed an entire episode where they were featured pretty prominently in the background and they got so bored over the course of the day of working on it that they would very intensely like stare into the camera and they did it so many times that they couldn't air the episode of the show <laughs> afterwards <laughs> after they edited it they realized they were like this guy ruined the show oh man but that could have been you that could still be you maybe yeah, I mean, as long as as long as this episode doesn't uh, blow up, uh, and then uh, I get a uh, blacklisted in Hollywood, <laughs> Trumbo style or something, Hugh will look at the camera. At my childhood home now, and I mentioned my parents about this show, and they're like, "God, that's airing in Massachusetts. You gotta be careful what you're saying." I'm like, you come back to bite you. That's fine. Yeah, Josh was just talking about how much he liked JFK the other day. So uh, we're, we're <laughs> beloved in the Northeast. <laughs> Why everyone um, loves him so much? But for a different time. Uh, <laughs> I had another question uh, for, for you two fellows. Was, um, I just, with your janitor video, I really felt like uh, it just had a, a, a rhythm to it. I felt like that with um, uh, the video called Wall as well. Uh, I'll link them all. Uh, but, like, do you guys... I know that uh, like music videos is something that y'all create as well and that will be hired to do. And do you see that kind of influencing the way that you like edit or pace uh, any the other things that you make? For sure. I mean, definitely from the concept, you know, from jump, think about rhythm and music. I mean, apart from like even our own production, just love music, love talking about music. Um, and love montage. Like, I think one of the things, you know, like the, my favorite part of the janitor short is the training sequence, which is purely just music and visuals. And that's just, I mean, that's, I think when that's the most cinematic type of video you can make is when you're propelling a story entirely through, uh, visual basically and then music helps sort of complement that and provide the rhythm so yeah that's that's a type of thing that we're we're drawn to um there's some scenes like that in the feature that we just made as well maybe to a lesser degree because it's a feature so i guess you need to give it a little bit more of like a lifelike rhythm sometimes um but yeah it's just it's it's so fun i think when you're watching something and it's just propelled purely by like music and, and, and eye-catching visuals. It's also just yeah. efficient storytelling, you know, which I think is something in music videos too, where you just, you have to be ultra efficient with the time that you have because it's very limited. So I, I think we really pride ourselves in trying to be as efficient as possible with storytelling. Mm -hmm. And montages have evolved quite a bit from like the eye of the tiger phase when it was just, like, that was like the only one. Uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, I, they've definitely, it's gone from uh, music kind of just being in the background to driving it more and such. Uh, I, I, whoa. Sorry, I'm holding some Pokemon cards uh, <laughs> as a fidget Naturally. <laughs> just, yeah, like, just like Charlie Rose would do when he was doing his interviews. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Letterman would always just be under the table like this, you know. Um, <laughs> Got to catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, where in Carolina are you guys from? Because I'm from Carolina originally. I was born there in in uh, Greensboro, and my big brother still lives in Charlotte. Oh, really? Oh, well, we're from uh, Chapel Hill. Well, oh. Josh, Josh lives in Chapel Hill, but uh, with uh, with us, uh, he he's from Newberry originally. I'm just gonna speak for Josh, uh, but yeah, no, Chapel Hill, right near campus of uh, UNC. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, what, what was it like growing up in Greensboro? Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then I guess, how did that lead to y'all two meeting? Was it was there a, was I, it a I tale of oldest time? <laughs> I lived in Greensboro until I was about like 12 years old. Then I moved up to Massachusetts with my family when my dad got a job up here and he had some family up here. And uh, shortly after that, moved to Bedford, Mass, where Luke and I met in sixth, seventh grade, and since then oh, have been right. friends. So, oh wow! So, quick question here: uh, Is there another cat, or like, where's the name from? Was it a trio of you guys first? Or? That's a great question. Get asked it a lot, and I have never quite developed the correct quippy answer. I mean, the real answer is. I have a fake answer I can give after the one you give. All right. but you can the give the real, real answer. answer is it was a name hatched by another buddy of ours that we grew up with. Um, like sophomore year of high school, right? Yeah, like super like – and <laughs> like this is, you know, like the most dumb, terrible little videos that we would shoot. And we would call – and it was me and two other guys actually. Rob wasn't even involved at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Although Rob later got it, but you know, that was just our like brand, right? Like, and it's, it never made any sense even at the time. Like it was purely, I can still picture being in the room and he just kind of looks around cause you know, you want to make the fake credits. It's like the best part of making the terrible movie Yeah, when you're like really, really young is like, uh, Oh yeah, we're gonna make the credits, and then it'll look like a real movie, you know. And, and then so, you make it scroll up like Star yeah, Wars. exactly. It takes like ten minutes to get to the movie because <laughs> there's so many credits, and so we needed our fake production company, and there was three of us in the room, and the first suggestion was Trace Gatos, and that's what spend, we went with. You spend more time working on the title of the movie than the actual script. You just sort of sit around. Oh, you're like, sure. yeah, but what do we call yeah, it? Right, and all the <laughs> titles didn't make sense either. My fake answer for why we're called Trace Gatos is because it's me, it's Luke, and it's Luke's cat, Charlie. So that's my <laughs> fake answer that, I don't know, Luke, we're still I, I searching think, for a better fake answer if you guys have one. Yeah, I think, yeah. I was I've liked all that. these answers so far. Yeah, I, I, was, I was assuming that you were going to say uh, it, was, it was you, Luke, and then you were leaving room for Jesus or something like that. <laughs> I, I, I that would have been better. I thought he was doing something like oh, that. Hang too. on to that one. You can have that one for free. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, these are good answers. Uh, honestly, I just also like the irony of there not being three. Like that's a yeah. good enough reason to have that's three mysterious. in the title. And here's the other. So if you Google Trace Gatos, it's Mexican restaurants, right? Correct. That's it's, what I found. It, it's a, it's one restaurant. As far as I've found, there's only two Trace Gatos in in North America. I'm going to go ahead and say that as a fact our production company at a Mexican restaurant that's like 20 minutes from us. And we didn't realize that obviously until fairly recently. And it does seem, you know, especially strange that um, it's very you know, it, would, it would be, a, it would be a company or a restaurant in Massachusetts. I mean, uh, one of our long-term goals is to destroy them somehow so that we <laughs> or would buy them out, buy them out. Yeah. Um, but that's Throw our memorabilia up like a planet Hollywood or something. <laughs> that's like 18 months away at least. Yeah, we got to work on, a little bit on that. Oh, yeah. Well, it's it's like how there's a, actually a farm right next to uh, Josh and I's apartment that's called Hughes Herd, where they herd sheep. And uh, we, we've been trying to uh, firebomb them since. Uh, well, I would go the other way. I think you just show up and go, all right, I'm ready. Where's my sheep? <laughs> um i would also like to with our remaining time jump into a little bit of tv talk Ooh. which is uh just basically how we sold the show when we were pitching it initially we said that we wanted to talk about what we're watching and then it's kind of spilled into having like a five minute sketch comedy thing at the beginning these uh great interviews 
So for legal purposes, what have y'all been uh, watching lately on like streaming services, movies? Rob, take the lead, buddy. I've been rewatching uh, two things. I've been rewatching The Sopranos, which I think is the best Classic. drama of all time. And I've been rewatching The Simpsons. And pretty Classic. much, it's the only two things I've been watching for like 25 years. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like I love The Simpsons so much. I think Luke and I both think it's like a huge, call it our biggest influence. Yeah, I'll throw um, this one. So, I mean, it's just because we were mentioning our tone earlier. Um, I think one thing that we've pitched or described our videos in the past is like Simpsons, the Simpsons brought to life or something like that. And we've been repeatedly advised not to say that because for a number of reasons. Um, <laughs> but but one someone, thing that the, the Simpsons hasn't been popular in the same way. In, well, but yeah. Like, and, and another being, you know, I think it was an industry person who told us like, the Simpsons means something different to everybody or something. And therefore like, it's not a great way of actually describing whatever it is you're trying to describe. But what it meant to us, I think was that there's a mix of sort of like earnest heart and then also like super broad wackiness, which, you know, I think to some degree you can see even in that janitor short, but anyway, I will second Rob and say that the Simpsons is definitely I mean, those early seasons, I guess you would say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it really does when you start watching it. Like, if you watch when, like, the first five seasons are airing, that's, like, a pretty different show from, like, yeah. the next five. And then and then you have, like, all the ones that they're making now still. Like, they're still making them. And that is a, that's a weird show. It's a weird show now. It I don't know if you'll me out. It. I don't – part of yeah. me, I keep wondering if, like, the right writing team or something could just suddenly get it back to – not exactly what it was, but at least something not what it is. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not All possible. I can think is uh, if for some reason it was like big news, like Simpsons is going to have like a big last episode. Like they're going to wrap it all up. Like maybe it's like 45 minutes. I would be pretty excited about that, even though I haven't like watched any of the new ones since yeah. like season 15 or something. I'd be sad about it, even though I haven't watched any of them. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that it's on, even though I never, ever, ever watch it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh it's like when you don't stay in touch with someone and you're like, I bet they're doing good. Yeah, you know, like yeah. it was their birthday yeah, on yeah, Facebook. Yeah. I'll like give them a thumbs up. I'm um, trying to think of things. There's always those celebrities that will pass away. I'm trying to think of like a more recent one where it's like a person I haven't thought of in like fifteen years, but then the second they pass away, I'm just like, What? Yeah. <laughs> we need them. <laughs> right. Uh uh Jerry Stiller died this year and I was like I hadn't yeah, seen anything that's a great that he'd one. been in for a while. And I was like, ah, we need it. That guy, we needed him for comedy in 2021. So I sure honestly don't know that I've, I felt the exact, that's a great example. I felt the exact same way. And I really can't think of anything since like, I don't know, Seinfeld really. I guess he was on King of Queens, but I didn't really watch Two King of Queens. Did he Heartbreak have a Heartbreak Kid was pretty good. Heartbreak Kid? Mm -hmm. I was actually curious if I've been... I found my, I've wanted to watch the original Heartbreak Kid with Charles Grodin for like maybe 10 years now, and I can't seem to find anywhere to watch it. If anybody at home watching this it. happens to have a hookup for the Heartbreak Kid, let me know. Luke, if is anything? Charles good? Grodin is watching it. Send it around to him. I have, I, I saw it, you know, was similarly kind of inspired to really want to track it down. Huge Charles Grodin fan. Yeah. And I remember being, a little underwhelmed, but, you know, that it's was a available. while ago. It's available used was it on the same plot as the one with Ben Stiller. What did you say? Was it like the same plot as the one with Ben Stiller? And like, I, I understand, I think so. I haven't seen the Stiller one, but it's it's got to be the weird thing is it's available on Amazon for $99 used oh. and new for $135. And that's the it only way that I really good. <laughs> I'd like to meet the person who just sells for the used one. I mean, I really, really <laughs> want to see it, but uh, I'll take my chance. Oh, man, a mad disc. Man, that DVD was so worth it. I hope if I watch it 99 more times, I'd still keep watching it worth every penny. Uh, Josh, you got anything what? for us? You've been streaming. Oh, well, 
I haven't watched anything lately, but the one thing that makes you want to rebuy Netflix is a uh, Flying Lotus got his. I believe it's like an animated show, Avatar style, uploaded, and I think that sounds pretty sick. I don't know if yeah. Y'all- so I've been listening to the soundtrack, and I it was I didn't know this was a thing until the soundtrack came out last whatever Friday. What's the show called? Yasuki? is that it? Yeah, that's that's it. So the same as the soundtrack. It. I guess that makes sense. And and you haven't seen it, but you're saying you think it would be good. Oh, totally. I I mean yeah. I I really like. I feel like all those those musicians, like certainly like Thundercat and Flying Lotus, and there's like Kamazi Washington. They're all into like anime so i feel like whatever like they were together to produce with like the music like, it must slap pretty hard yeah and, um, Kamasi Kamasi was that one show incredible uh midnight gospel was a netflix cartoon that came out recently and i feel like it could be something like that that, that was a pretty good one it was like they would like take podcast recordings and like just animate over them make them these kind of like wacky adventure time looking stories Okay. And uh, look, it could be kind of like that. Um, I don't know why I get Adventure Time vibes from Thundercat, but I guess that's just the kind of cartoon that I would want to watch. Uh, and if I were to plug uh, any kind of show that I've been streaming lately, I would say, uh, have either of y'all seen How To with John Wilson? It's on HBO Max. No, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with it and I've heard great things. I've actually, it's one of those ones that's been recommended so many times that I'm like not watching it almost as like a like you're numb to it just yeah. passes right over which i know um, is like an immature uh response it's i mean it's like they it's, only, there's only six 30 minute episodes so it's not like you should like rush out and say hbo max um you've got me hooked for a year or anything but it's kind of cool uh, he uh i mean i saw it's funny, produced like, by it's produced nathan by fielder. nathan fielder right yeah and we love Nathan for you. Nathan for you. Wait, is- produced by Nathan Fielder. Uh, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it it has the same energy for sure. Really, it, it's That's the great. same thing where it's like, is this guy just like really staying in character, or is he uh, awkward but kind of aware of it? But it worked for me either way. That's cool. It seems like already HBO Max has a much higher batting average than like Netflix or Amazon Prime. Or, I mean, I guess Amazon Prime isn't quite in the same league, but like. But I mean, I just watched Mortal Kombat and it was uh, it was really bad. <laughs> it was the, the new one. I saw the first like five minutes or something and I don't know what I was expecting. Like I was like, oh, yeah, he like gets stabbed in the heart or something. You know, like, I don't know, just super graphic yeah. violence. It's like, yeah, it's as advertised. It's Mortal Kombat. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ten minutes in, I was like, I'm lost. Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it was a little too intellectual? <laughs> yeah, oh, the, the plot just went right over my head. Uh, no, I made it an hour in, and then I started Googling if the movie got any better. Like, that that was the point I was at. And they're like, you, it needs a sequel. Like, they don't go to the Mortal Kombat tournament in this one. Um, oh, which you would you would think with the name... <laughs> but uh, they don't. It's, did you like the original Mortal Kombat? I actually just watched that afterwards. I was like, let's take it old school. And um, <laughs> it, it was pretty good. <laughs> I liked it. This is where you fall down. Where do you get these guys? Oh, is it available that. for... Oh, I'll make is- that my plug. Is yeah, it available for HBO less Max. than a hundred dollars? Oh, okay, good. good. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, no, it's, uh, it's, that's uh, my price 5, point. To, <laughs> they send you a VHS tape that's broken and it's still five thousand. That's great. Um, well, we told you fellas thirty minutes. We'll trim two minutes off to keep to our word. Uh, and for Hugh's herd, I'm Hugh. <laughs> and for Hugh Heard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks, fellas. Uh, Rob Pooley, Luke Jarvis, thank you for being yeah, awesome. here. Awesome, it was fun. <laughs> thank we, you guys uh, so we, much. we never nailed down our uh, closing line. If you guys had any good ideas, I'm Hugh, and here I'm trying to think of a Hugh, you sort of <laughs> like pun. You're watching Hugh's heard it cuts right off. Ba, 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 ba. Disney Channel. It. Yeah, just throw in some of those uh, the the crappy music that we're talking about for public domain. Make that your jingle. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll just find the first uh, most royalty free song we can. <laughs> well, or I would oh. go the other way again. I would do a Rihanna song and hope to get in a legal dispute. That could be good promotion. <laughs> that would really publish like a That would be our ticket to fame, right? <laughs> Hughes heard brought to you by Flying Lotus. Just like <laughs> play them throughout. And then they get uh, the legal rights to it and they change it to Flying Lotus is heard. <laughs> <laughs> they they gain the uh, they gain like the 30 followers we have. <laughs> Everything. Um, <we> have. <laughs>